they don wings. And on a still, warm autumn day, they fly off en masse in what is described as a dispersal flight. While some species migrate hundreds of kilometers, these aphids stay close to the sumac groves. Just 200 meters away, a moss-draped stone wall serves as the aphids' winter retreat. Like many of their kind, these aphids practice host alternation. When seasonal changes make their primary food source unavailable, they move to another. These winged adult females begin to reproduce immediately, replicating themselves through parthenogenesis. To ensure the safety of their offspring, in autumn, many aphid species lay eggs that remain dormant throughout the rigors of winter. But not so the nutgall aphids. Even here on the moss, they are viviparous. Their young hatch during birth or very soon afterwards. The newborn aphids are less than a third of a millimeter long. A single adult gives birth to about 30 young in quick succession. Spent from this frenzy of reproduction, her abdomen deflated, the mother will soon die. But her offspring are thriving. This newborn aphid is already feeding, rotating its body around the stylet bundle, which actually probes between the cells of the moss before it pierces the plant's juicy, sap-filled tissues. The white threads on this tiny nymph's back are those same waxy wastes that built up inside the gall. But here they serve a useful purpose. Rather than shedding or disposing of the wastes, aphids of this generation allow the wax to build up to form a sheltering cocoon-like structure around them. Best described as a resting stage, this is a period of dormancy rather than transformation. For the next six months, the nutgall aphid nymph will lie protectively swaddled in its own wastes. It will emerge as a fully developed adult without passing through the pupal stage common to most insects. Although Tokyo winters are not unduly harsh, snow falls on the hills around Mount Fuji two or three times during the season. But the aphids rest safely in moss, wrapped in their waterproof shrouds. It is still cold when the plums blossom in February, but in Japan, this is a sure sign that spring is not far away. Soon the woodland flowers begin to bloom. The forest comes alive with the sound of bird song once again. The fertile earth lies ready. The hills are set to awaken. In April, the nutgall aphids sheltering in the moss also awaken from their long slumber, shrugging off both their winter wrappings and their skins in a final molt. The adult that emerges has wings and a well-developed muscular thorax to power its flight. Air pumped through their veins inflates the folded wings, which then dry and harden in the sun and air. This process can take up to several hours, depending on the temperature. The first of the winged adults embarks on her maiden flight. 
soon followed by another, and another, until the moss is a swarm with flying aphids, returning to their ancestral home in the gallnut trees. Despite their naked appearance, the sumacs are already beginning to break bud. The aphids' spring return to their primary host signals a dramatic change. Once again, they hasten to reproduce. But this time, through some not fully understood miracle of nature, they also produce male offspring. This is still parthenogenesis. Males are distinguished from females only by what they are missing, a single X chromosome. Possessing the full complement of two Xs, newborn female nymphs are genetically identical to their mothers. They are somewhat larger than the males and differ in coloration. Five generations of exclusively female offspring produced by parthenogenesis must pass before this act of mating can take place. The exchange of genetic material through sexual reproduction occurs only once each year. Fresh green is the literal translation of the Japanese word for spring. And as the sumacs put forth a surge of fresh green growth, conditions are ideal for gall making. These aphids belong to the only generation of the year that is the product of the mating of two parents. They are the new stem mothers. Every inhabitant of the gall colony this aphid founds will be identical to her. But because their parents mixed their genes during mating, the stem mothers differ from one another. This guarantees genetic diversity and helps ensure that the aphids remain adaptable to changing conditions. In the life cycle of the nut gall aphid, there is neither beginning nor end. There is only a circle, a continuity. Behind the paved roads and the power lines, behind the hustle and bustle of the workaday world, there is another world. It is the world of nature, abundant, unbridled, irrepressible. There are miniature worlds, home to creatures that we, in our ignorance, might despise. But they are marvels in their own right, wonders of creation. In their world, the tiny aphid gall makers are effective opportunists, able to change their food source, their reproductive strategies, even their body forms to meet the changing conditions of the moment. Adaptable and complex, in their world, these aphid horticulturalists reign supreme. Thank you.